in television, it's always good to have a market exclusive. You want to have that exclusive story. But I have long said that uh, being the only meteorologist in your market that is connecting what we're seeing to the changes in the climate is an exclusive that nobody wants. I spent as much time as I could making sure that I was reaching out to uh, the people and, and reading the articles that I could so that I could be the person that could be trusted with the information on TV. Uh, did you know in a warming climate there's more variation? That's why we've got more wild weather this winter. Uh, because that's the most important thing is, is we're communicating something as important as a world crisis. Was approached by this station out in Des Moines and I made it clear that I make connections uh, to climate change. You're now you're pretty passionate about climate change and uh, you're always trying to educate us. Seven of the top 10 warmest years on records have happened since 2006. That's a lot to take in. As a board member of the American Meteorological Society, I've always stressed the importance of making the connections. We're the scientists. It went from preaching to the choir. The feedback that I did receive in Boston was largely positive, but then it went into jumping into the lion's den. There are more conservative states than Iowa, but yet the feedback and the pushback that I'm getting, it, it almost doesn't add up. Um, from threats to um, telling station management that, that they weren't gonna watch the station anymore. Yeah, I've been in this market for 30 years. And if I talk about climate change on the air and somebody sends a nasty email to my boss saying, now you're politicizing the weather report and I'm gonna watch somebody else. Frankly, I don't care because I have enough market uh, uh, security that uh, it's not gonna bother me. But it frankly is bullying when people do that. And because it's become so politicized, it was potentially taboo and even dangerous for local meteorologists across the country to talk about. I think you're going to find those things where there are pockets of the country that are still not paying attention to this or not receptive to it. On December 15th, we broke the record high temperature by 16 degrees. Yet people just focus on, well, we're still getting cold in the winter. <laughs> so I think that that's the head scratcher and that's the analogy of the putting a frog in pot of water and then turning up the heat. I don't think it's entirely political. Arizona is a historically red state where I am, and people are paying attention to this now because they have to deal with it in their daily lives. Nearly half people have felt it within their county just in the last couple of years. The summer of 2020 was a big wake up call for a lot of people. We had 53 days in Phoenix at 110 or hotter that summer. The previous record was 33 days at 110 or hotter. And so that record was just blown out of the water. I mean, it wasn't even close. We didn't break it by just a day or two. We broke it by 20 days. And people were literally dying here in the heat. That is when you don't have to be proving anything to anyone, they're living it. Things that just couldn't happen through natural variability are now happening on a consistent basis. And I think meteorologists are more equipped than anyone to tell people what we know and what we don't know. I think about storms like Ida. This is now 150 mile per hour max sustained winds, a strong Cat 4, just six miles per hour short of Cat 5. And you see me reporting at the Gulf Coast and we know that this is going to be an incredibly strong storm and sure enough it rapidly intensifies as I forgot how many in the last two years have a lot more than we usually see. Rapid intensification, you hear it all the time. It basically means a storm that goes 35 miles per hour faster within 24 hours before making landfall. Ida did that and way more. I'm saying more than a half foot of rain is going to fall in the tri-state in just hours and i'm saying it but i gotta tell you even though i'm forecasting it it is still hard for me to comprehend since coming to iowa in july i've covered 102 tornadoes a duration uh, and uh, widespread baseball sized hail <laughs> and the highest temperature ever recorded during the month of december <laughs> six months i was really thankful that i had uh, managers at the TV station that I was at in Rockford, Illinois, um, that allowed me to communicate this. I have seen uh, opportunities increase in terms of the ability to provide 
climate context during my uh, daily weather broadcasts, oftentimes linked to extreme weather events. Over time, um, our, our viewership, our news ratings went up. Um, we were the news leader. We were the number one station and the people were craving the information from the, the scientist. We have to remember that the people that are most energized to complain are not representative of the communities that we serve. I do get a lot of people just asking now, what do I do? And that's really where I think our job comes to too, because you need to feel empowered. And um, I, I created an entire weekly segment called It's Not Too Late for that reason, uh, because it's not. But now, because this is such a big issue for Arizona, we have an entire climate team called the Impact Earth Team. This Impact Earth report tonight, meteorologist Jorge Torres and photojournalist Justin Fuller traveled to the Arizona-Utah border to see the water levels for themselves. And so we have producers and reporters and meteorologists that are all helping to tell these climate stories. I don't think that there are enough examples out there for the younger TV meteorologists that are deathly afraid to bring this up and to make these connections in areas that may not be the bluest states. After 22 years, um, I've just recently stepped away from uh, the, uh, the green wall from the Weather Center in the studio uh, to pursue a uh, a run for the United States Congress. We need more people to go to Congress with a background in the, in the foundation of science to be able to not only explain it to the people, but to explain it to the rest of the people in our government. That's what we need to be doing.